For 25 years, we have been Indiana's business news leader. This is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick. Presented by Elevate Ventures and Indiana University. Momentum building in Indiana's second largest city. Fort Wayne clearing the way for a massive new data center campus. It is a Fortune 100 company that we've been uh, trying to entice to come here for some period of time. Fort Wayne Mayor Tom Henry sheds more light on the impact of that investment. Plus, a deep dive into what's next for riverfront development, housing, and overall growth in the region. And Indiana driving forward with another multi-million dollar electric vehicle investment. Why Kokomo is all charged up over plans for yet another EV battery plant coming to Howard County. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick coming to you this week from Northeast Indiana, specifically Fort Wayne. We are just outside a new signature entryway and exit out of downtown Fort Wayne. This is Veterans Memorial Bridge, a major project uh, here in Fort Wayne, a city and a region that continues to see momentum. As you look at downtown Fort Wayne, it continues to grow with new office, residential, and retail construction, including the $300 million plus electric works project, the remake of an old General Electric factory campus that is being held up as an example around the country of urban redevelopment. And recently there was a grand opening and ribbon cutting for the riverfront at Promenade Park and the completion of another phase of the Riverfront Park public space. The Riverfront at Promenade Park, a private investment that is a six-story mixed-use building, includes more than 200 apartments, seven townhomes, and a 900-space parking garage. The total project investment, nearly $90 million. A little bit harder. And Mayor Tom Henry says the hits keep on coming. Announcing plans this week by a Fortune 100 company to acquire 900 acres for a massive data center, adding to economic momentum that has been building here for more than a decade. They're prepared to invest a considerable amount of money in the city of Fort Wayne. And obviously, if, if it presents itself, a, a number of buildings will be built, construction jobs will be developed, and of course, their own workforce, which again is up to them to develop. In addition to uh, construction, and visibly you can see it downtown in, in terms of uh, office space, retail, restaurants, and people are living in downtown Fort Wayne. Oh, uh, over the past 10 years, we've more than quadrupled the amount of people that live downtown. There are currently another 250 apartments and townhomes being built downtown. Uh, the one that was just finished within the last couple of years is already filled. Uh, and there's now a uh, discussion to build another one. So it's uh, another about a $100 million venture. So it's, uh, it's been very exciting. The risk that we took a decade or so ago was that we felt in order to really be attractive to potential developers, uh, employers, people who are maybe want to call Fort Wayne home, we had to have a vibrant, thriving, exciting downtown. That's the center of commerce. That's where your banking industry is and your government offices, your lawyers. If you don't have a downtown that's inviting, the probability of people coming back is reduced significantly. Conversely, if you have one that's very inviting with hospitality offerings, places to live, uh, a lot of storefront operations that are, that, that are fun to go to, that probability increases significantly. That's the risk that we took over the past 10 years. We've invested roughly a billion dollars in our downtown, and I think it's paid off uh, several times over. From Fort Wayne to Kokomo now, where state efforts to attract electric vehicle investment continue to pay off, a Stellantis Samsung SDI joint venture announcing plans for a second electric vehicle battery plant, a $3.2 billion investment that could mean 1,400 jobs. That brings the joint venture's total investment in Howard County to more than $6.3 billion, with commitments to add 2,800 jobs between the two new factories. Indiana Secretary of Commerce David Rosenberg tells me it's part of another record year for economic development in the state. We're still at a very historic pace. The pipeline is, is robust, you know, I think, again, with a lot of the geopolitical tensions, the re reshoring, modernization, 
the capital that's looking to come to the U.S. isn't looking to go to the coast, but we have the, the stable business environment, we have the workforce, we have the communities, we have the educational institutions. So the state of the economy is, is very strong, historic, and we'll continue to lean into that as we move through the rest of Governor Holcomb's term. I talked with Rosenberg at this week's Engage Northeast Indiana event in Fort Wayne. More than 320 business, community, and academic leaders attending a luncheon at Grand Wayne Center for a discussion on key regional issues. It's a partnership among Inside Indiana Business, IBJ Media, and the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. Well, Fort Wayne is literally a hop, skip, and a jump from Warsaw, Kosciuszko County, and the orthopedics capital of the world. Coming up, we'll tell you how Fort Wayne and Northeast Indiana continues to carve a niche in the ortho industry. Gary, congratulations to you and your superb team on 25 years of Inside Indiana business. What an enormously successful run this has been. You have created the mold and you've broken the mold for an interview format, for getting the most complicated topics in the world and, and many, many different kinds of people to talk about them and somehow get the whole thing done in an interview under three minutes. It's a remarkable skill and you've made a huge difference along the way. Those of us who have had the pleasure to sit across this desk from you in energizing and energized conversations, none of us will ever forget that experience. And along the way, you've made a huge impact on our state, on our community, and on our economic progress. You're a big part of this landscape, and we can't wait to see what you and Inside Indiana Business do next. The year was 1982, the historic Fort Wayne flood. Record snowfall over the winter had nowhere to go once it melted in the spring. And the three rivers here overflowed their banks, creating flooding that caused tens of millions of dollars in damage. It got national attention. Then President Reagan stopped to help throw sandbags with volunteers along the banks of the rivers here. In fact, it was a volunteer effort that got national attention for Fort Wayne, which then was named an all-American city. You might say that same sense of community and volunteer spirit are coming to the fore now as Fort Wayne and Northeast Indiana confront key issues facing the region's economy, including educational attainment, population growth, and wage growth as well. A prime example, creation of the Northeast Indiana Strategic Development Commission, funded by $30 million from the Indiana General Assembly. It is a regional effort focused on addressing key issues here, including housing, talent attraction and retention, and workforce. Population growth is important to the state. So how do we tackle those issues, making sure that our kids you know, stay in, into our region, uh, making sure that they actually get accreditations, they get to college and work in companies that they want to work with. So the combination between attraction, retention, quality of, sk of skill set, but then housing. You know, we can talk about bringing all these type of people and jobs if they don't have enough rooftops, you know, or, you know, then everything kind of falls apart. So it is, it's not one or the other, and it's all, which it kind of makes it fun, but also very complicated in so many different levels. Meantime, it is estimated that fewer than 50% of local high school graduates have career pathways. A new nonprofit that is about to launch here, Grow Allen, is a collaboration among the county's four public school systems and the business community aimed at reaching students at a young age. Yeah, we're really, it's going to be built around four pillars. We're really going to be focused on that early childhood all the way through 12. You know, Dr. Daniel, superintendent for Fort Wayne Community Schools, always says the most important day uh, is, the is the day after graduation as to what they're going to do. Um, what is that career path? And making sure that everyone that graduates from all of our uh, high schools knows exactly what they want to do, whether it's trades or whether it's higher ed. So really creating Grow Allen is really going to make that a priority. One of the important industries that stands to benefit from the career pathways push is orthopedics. About 40 miles to the west of Fort Wayne is Warsaw, long billed as the orthopedics capital of the world. It is an industry that accounts for nearly half of Kosciuszko County's employment and one that is being transformed 
by technology. We see um, technology working its way into the, the equation in a bigger and bigger way. I think the opportunity is just, um, it's probably bigger than we can even fathom. Uh, and the, the most important thing I think is going to be us trying to be out ahead of it as it relates to the workforce side of things. I think the, the new buzz term is, is med tech, you know, anything with tech in it sells, and, um, but I, I think it's real. I, I don't think it's smoke and mirrors. I, I think that the, the orthopedic capital of the world is, is what we're known to, uh, to be, uh, and we want to become the med tech corridor um, of the world, if you will, and I, and I do think it's real. Vito and others envision a med tech corridor along US 30, which for years has been targeted for improvements that businesses throughout the region say are critically needed. I'll just give you an example. We have eight large steel mills in different parts of the country, and in every one of those, except the one that's on US 30, customers and suppliers have located. So the economic impact is not just the steel mill, it's all those customers and suppliers locating around there. Instead, because that highway is no good, it's not good enough, and you know, we, we ship it out by rail and it goes somewhere else. We could have that economic impact if we had that road. It's very, very important and it's long, long overdue. Nearly 800,000 people call Northeast Indiana home. The business climate here is innovative, diverse and growing from the defense sector to manufacturing to steel, agriculture. More now on some of the company's driving revenue in the Fort Wayne region. The Northeast Indiana region, home to aerospace powerhouses like BAE. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. And big defense contractors like Raytheon and L3 Harris. Combined, these three companies employ more than 2,000 people in the Fort Wayne region. The Butler Division, our flagship operation, was constructed in record time. Heavy-duty manufacturing, also a big part of the fabric in Northeast Indiana. Steel Dynamics, headquartered in Fort Wayne, the third largest producer of steel products in North America. Sorterra calls the tiny town of Markle home base, the company putting its stamp on the industrial scrap metal recycling industry. And like just about everywhere else in Indiana, there's the agriculture dynamic and its impact on the economy. Places like family-owned Miller Poultry in the tiny town of Orland, which has been in business for more than 40 years. And Come with me to an ice cream factory. The region also scooping up big bucks in the ice cream game. Dryers brand ice cream, part of the Northeast Indiana food ag chain contributing more than $31 billion to the state's economy. Perhaps one of Fort Wayne's best-known brands? Vera Bradley Designs, still a go-to for women looking for fashionable purses. Another Fort Wayne area business that's creating jobs and putting revenue in the bag. Coming up next, drones entering the healthcare scene, the Indiana connection, and how it could transform how hospitals treat patients. And Cummins gaining big traction in the hydrogen business. In this week's IBJ, a look at what's fueling huge demand, big profits, and Cummins' role in putting North America's first hydrogen-powered train on the tracks. Military might in Indiana paying off in a big way. A new study out shows the Indiana Guard's 122nd Fighter Wing in Fort Wayne generates roughly $13 million in economic impact across the state. Here's what's making news around Indiana, brought to you by the Indiana Association of Realtors, Indiana's 21,000 realtors, the neighbors you know, the experts you can count on. We are back in downtown Fort Wayne, but we have a lot of business news to share with you from around the state. Everything from drones delivering the goods to Indiana hospitals to big development news in Anderson. We begin with IU going all in on high tech and national defense. The university planning to invest $111 million in new faculty, facilities and equipment focused on advancements in microelectronics and nanotechnology. 
Part of the deal includes collaboration with the Naval Surface Warfare Center Crane Division, which is the third largest U.S. Navy installation in the world and just 35 miles southwest of Bloomington. To West Lafayette now, where Purdue University is ramping up efforts to figure out how to solve Indiana's digital divide. Purdue's new broadband team will work with local communities across the state where broadband access is most needed and what tools are necessary to get Internet access up and running. The move comes as Indiana leaders plan how to spend nearly $870 million in federal funding for broadband access. Expanded space to treat those with addiction and mental health issues in northern Indiana. Mental health services provider Oaklawn opening a new $16 million campus in South Bend. Oaklawn also planning to bring St. Joseph County its first around-the-clock mental health services this winter. Indiana's struggling housing market appears to be on the rebound. The Indiana Builders Association reporting a 20 percent increase in the number of building permits issued from August 2022 to August of this year. Last month saw the biggest number of housing permits issued in Indiana since 2007. Indiana engineered smart mailbox technology being tested at two Hoosier hospitals. Indianapolis-based Arrive conducting demonstrations at Good Samaritan in Vincennes and Community Health Network in Indianapolis. Part of the testing includes delivering medical samples from miles away to those hospitals. Hammond now passed the halfway mark of turning the historic Bank Calumet building into apartments and retail space. The $24 million reconstruction of the 100-year-old nine-story building expected to be finished by next year. High-performance alloys in Tipton, one of the 17 companies on the Indiana Chamber's best places to work list. The companies were chosen based on employer reports and worker surveys. And a new take on the origin on what's a Hoosier taking on a new spirit. The IBJ's David Linquist reporting a local sales engineer is launching a new brand of vodka that takes its name from the word Hoosier. Who's a production planning to get off the ground this month? Well, he wanted to be a veterinarian, but instead, Ron Roshan finds himself running one of Indiana's growing universities. Roshan is the University of Southern Indiana's fourth president, and he's my guest on the next Business and Beyond podcast. He's the first African-American to serve in the role at USI and has helped spearhead growth in enrollment. 9,000 students now taking classes at the school, as well as USI's move to D1 Athletics. Roshan's vision for USI, establishing a footprint in Indiana's ag and farming sectors. Agriculture is an industry that, that this nation is, is forever dependent on. Our history, as well as our future. Each and every day we eat, you know, we're eating plant-based or, or either, either, you know, animal-based, you know, products. You know, how do we market this? You know, how do we produce it? You know, how, how do we sustain it? How do we provide the best caloric intake on a daily basis? This is all agriculture. Mm -hmm. And so finding ways in which we can develop something here uniquely at USI in support of the state is something I'm very, very much, very much interested in. Much more with University of Southern Indiana President Ron Roshan. That's on the next Business and Beyond podcast. You can find it at InsideIndianaBusiness.com. We make the best hamburgers in the business. But my daughter Wendy says, Dad, people are eating more salads today. So let's make a great taco salad. But let us a titan in the fast food hamburger world and his tie to Fort Wayne. More on Wendy's founder Dave Thomas's connection to Allen County when we come back. Who knew Northeast Indiana was the base of cranking out music on a high note? Sweetwater in Fort Wayne, the largest online retailer of musical instruments and audio equipment in the United States. But music not the only thing putting a groove into Fort Wayne's economy. The city sits less than 50 miles from Warsaw, the orthopedics capital of the world, and Fort Wayne using its geography and workforce to make a big impact in that space. Well, I mentioned earlier uh, this bridge, Allen County War veterans dating all the way back to the Revolutionary War, getting some much needed recognition here. The city of Fort Wayne dedicating a newly redesigned and renamed bridge over the St. Mary's River. That was in September. 
the former Samuel Bigger Memorial Bridge, now known as Fort Wayne Veterans Memorial Bridge. It's a $5 million investment that includes a sculpture honoring the six branches of the military, three lanes of traffic, and more walkways for pedestrians connecting to the old fort and nearby neighborhoods, all part of that major upgrade. Fort Wayne's Three Rivers, the St. Mary's, St. Joseph, and Maumee, a huge part of the city's past and present. The first fort in America built here back in the 1800s. Today, the riverfront, a thriving and growing destination. It's a city that helped foster fast food empire king, Dave Thomas. Eggs, bacon, a stack of pancakes, and coffee. Don't forget about Wendy's new Big Bacon Classic. Oh, yeah. Uh, just coffee. You spoil your lunch, fellas. It's a whole quarter pound of fresh beef, processed cheese, lots of toppings. How many? Three big strips of bacon. Fort Wayne gave Wayne the bacon. founder of Wendy's his start in the restaurant business. Thomas spending his teenage years working at the Hobby House. The Summit City also with ties to two comedy legends. Actress Jenna Fisher from The Office. Hmm. Do you wear boxers, briefs, or pantaloons? Oh, uh, well, Ooh. you're very saucy. And Shelley Long from Cheers. <laughs> Goodbye, buddy. Bye, amigo. <laughs> Goodbye, mon ami. We would never have seen Dave Thomas, Jenna Fisher, or Shelley Long on TV if not for Fort Wayne's Philo Farnsworth. He invented television. The gas pump, Fort Wayne's Sylvanus Bowser brought us that. So the next time you grab the remote, fill up the tank, or eat a burger at Wendy's, remember the Hoosier connection. You ate breakfast, didn't you? Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Inside Indiana Business. We hope you've enjoyed our look at Fort Wayne and Northeast Indiana, an economy that continues to be on the move. And we look forward to coming to your community very soon. I'm Gary Dick. Thanks for joining us. Go out and make it a successful week.